What's good, y'all? I want to show you a video that I made for my channel members. If you don't know, I do have a channel membership. And in that channel membership, all the members get access to videos that are kind of like my back of the room, uh, secret in the dark things that I think about and things that I play around. Um, and usually those videos aren't too fancy or flashy like the ones that I do here. As a result, they get a lot more content way faster and they get a lot of interesting uh, ideas or that, that to be honest, I, I just don't have time to flesh out for general YouTube. But what I want to do is I want to, one of the ideas that I've posted in a group um, was very well received and I want to make it available here to you guys. Um, I was going to make it more fancy, but I don't have the time. It's just lightly edited for speed and brevity, but for the most part, it is what it is. If you are interested in the channel membership, um, I guess it's a good time. I, I will talk to you at the end about that. If you stay to at the end, I have some updates about the channel membership. Channel members, what's good, man? I have an automation for you guys that I've been sitting on for a little bit, never had a chance to kind of get around to making it, but uh, I, I'm getting around to it now, I guess. So I'm going to be going over interesting automation, and this is probably more relevant for those who are iPhone users, but those who do use Androids, I guess we can have a little dialogue about this in the Discord in terms of what a good equivalent can be. I guess full transparency. I have not really checked out like the Home Assistant app that's on the phone. They could possibly have either a shortcut or some kind of widget or, or let's just call it some kind of feature within there that allows you to use the assist feature. So you know how each that home assistant has its assist. They probably have something that you can use do to use it. And I know that you can go into the app to trigger it and then use it that way, but I don't want to do that. That takes too long. And I personally don't like going into apps and I rarely go into the home assistant app on my phone. So I want to show you guys a new way. If you haven't seen the video, I've created a video a while back last year about using webhooks. And one of the cool things that I figured that you could do is you can trigger webhooks from your phone. So whether you have like an NFC that you tap and then you have a shortcut that triggers a particular action based off of the NFC and that action is like a webhook that you call into your home assistant environment, neither here nor there, you guys can check it out. Let me just kind of show you a bit of what I mean and how this works. This is a test. I don't know if you heard that, but let's try one more time. This is a test. Hello. All right. So it spoke to me. It just said hello. But again, this was a test. Let me make it more fancy. One second. Let's go here. Nice. Come here. Change this. And then that's the right path. Click done, and let's take a look. Hey, what is your name? My name is Kay. How can I assist you today? What are you able to do? I can assist you with a variety of tasks related to managing your smart home and answering your questions. Here are some things I can do on control devices, turn on off lights, locks, and other smart devices, adjust the thermostat temperature, arm or disarm your security system. Please let me know, and I'll be happy to assist you. That was a lot. Uh, let me just give it one last command. Hopefully it won't be as long. Turn off the desk light. Done. Okay. Can you turn on the desk light? Done. All right. I'm not using Siri, as you probably heard, or I don't know if you can hear, but it's not Siri. That's not Siri at all. That is my smart home. My smart home is basically talking to me through my phone. So I don't have the iPhone 13, 14, 15, where I don't even know what number on, to be honest. I have the iPhone 12 Pro Max Plus, whatever. God, their namings are just horrible. It's just not memorable. But I have basically the biggest version of the iPhone 12 that you you can have. That's what I have. Now with that, of course, I don't have an action button. Like that's not here. But of course there are some 
cool accessibility options that you can do to kind of give you the action button kind of feature. So what I've done is I've turned on the accessibility mode to essentially back tap. So I can just triple tap or double tap the back of the phone and that will instantly run a shortcut that's on this phone. And that shortcut is called talk to K. All the shortcut does is it starts the dictation where it asks me what I wanna say and I can just speak to it normally. Once I finish speaking, it then triggers a web hook that will then send all of that text to my smart home and it goes into node red node red will then take all that information run it through k and then k will respond back with the particular text but once the text make it back to the iphone the iphone then translate that text into speech and then it speaks back to me so i want to show you guys how to do that and i hopefully this will make sense i this is not again a polished video so this is going to look a bit it's going to be jank but hopefully you guys can understand it and I don't know when a more polished video would be coming out, but like I said, you're part of this community and as such, you get this quick and in, 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 in the moment. So enjoy, man, enjoy. So let's get to it. I'm gonna show you that this can be done in Node Red, bare bones, naked. So we have this node and this lets you basically take in, if someone hits your server, this is what gets triggered if it hits the appropriate endpoint. In my case, I just created an endpoint that's called test. So if you are in your house and you have a device that's in your house and you go to whatever your, let's say this computer, whatever IP this computer has within your home network, if you call it and then you have um, 1880 forward slash test, and then you make a post request to it, this is what will get triggered, which is great. So I can simply do that on my phone. In the phone, I have a shortcut. Let's see. In the phone, I have a shortcut, and that shortcut here basically is the get contents of, and then you can pass it or tell it what URL to hit. And in my case, I'm calling my internal IP of basically for this computer, it is 10.0.0. I think for this one is I think 240 something, or I have two servers running, but one is at 252. That's where K sits on. Um, and then forward slash test. Um, and then when I make the post request to it, then this particular node will light up and it will fire. And it's gonna fire with particular information. I am going to get this IP address back again so I can run it so you guys can see. Let's look for it. So here's how you find the IP address, at least if you're on a Mac. Um, Wi-Fi settings, I go to details, and then here it is. So IP address is 239. So, Let's cancel, come here, and this is 239. Done. And then when I play it, this is a test. Hello. It speaks back hello. And you can see the debug here. Here in the payload, we have first name, it's me, text is this. Theoretically, you can have a shortcut on any, if you have a home filled with iPhone users, you could just set this shortcut up on any of their devices. They could trigger it and you can send, let's say your own custom unique payload because you can dynamically send different information if you like. In my case, I'm sending the dictated text, which came from the first part of this shortcut. And I'm also sending my first name. I'm also- Hello. Yeah, I'm also sending my first name. Um, you could pass in more information. You could pass in less information. It's up to you. But those are the two things that I'm passing, the dictated text and my first name. I could add more information. So I, I, and I haven't explored everything that's here on the iPhone in terms of shortcut, but let's say that you're able to get, let's say your location information, perhaps you can pass that too. So now the context of what is being sent to your home assistant or node red, you now know that the user is in a particular place or, whatever the sky's the limits to be honest it's up to you you can go crazy with it whatever you have access to on this phone you can send to it in that payload so that's how this works in its infancy or in its smallest form this post lights up i have this debug here which is what we saw there i am simply to send information back to the phone because what happens is that because we're sending a post request the phone is going to wait for a reply it needs to 
close the loop or timeout. Um, and in this case, in order to close the loop to let the phone know that the message has been received and give information back, we need this HTTP out or this one, uh, where is it? This HTTP response. So that's this. All I have to do is add it to the end. There's nothing fancy in it. I did absolutely nothing. Um, and they have to be within the same flow or within the same path. I can't have this set up elsewhere. This, if I have this post, I need to have this HTTP response within the same flow. I have in the middle of here, this some um, change, uh, what's this called? The change node. Let me make sure change. Yep. The change node. And all I'm doing is I'm basically saying I hard coded hello, and I'm putting it in payload.message.content. When you go back to the shortcut, I have here to speak. Uh, I have a speak shortcut or I guess application. I call it a shortcut. There's a speak module here that it will speak whatever text that it's given to tell it what text to give. I simply go into it and I say, Hey, um, you're going to look for, let's see, this content. The content is going to be of a dictionary type. And I tell it that it's going to look for message.content. You have here message.content. So as long as you have the payload and you pass back in the payload what you want, in my case, I have hello and it being um, in message.content, it'll send it back. Your phone will see it and it will read it. And that's pretty much it. That is that is it in a nutshell. I haven't tried things out. Like, for instance, if you check this input node, there's like accept file uploads. I have no idea what that is. I would love to check it out. I would love to be able to send videos or images and then have it being sent to um, Node Red for Node Red to maybe pass it to, I don't know, some kind of internal LLM or some kind of service that can interpret it or whatever the case is. Like the sky's the limits, to be honest. I have here as well, if you noticed, um, Node Red setup. So, not sorry. So, I have here additionally, um, open AI or basically AI, and I can pass that information to AI, which is what you heard in my little example here. In my particular automation, I have K basically taking that message that gets sent from my phone and it's getting sent into, uh, the AI or GPT, GPT handles all the information or K in this case, I'll just use K as a substitute for GPT. K gets all the information. It'll um, answer it appropriately and then send that information back. And as you heard, it will just simply read it all out. Um, additionally, it will actually do and run commands the same way that I would go into home assistant and I would talk to K assist or sorry, the same way I would go into home assistant and type into assist commands. I have assist actually pointed to node red and node red will do its thing with GPT and then send the information back to assist. Matter of fact, you can see that. Um, I will show that here for you. And then in another video, I will show you how to do that for yourself because that, that was also, that was also a thing that I had to figure out. Um, but let's go to home assistant, home assistant and how can I assist? And then I can say, what is your name? There we go. My name is Kay. How can I assist? This is something, uh, as you see here, I have K as the, what do they refer to this as? As the assistant. So it's using K or my local uh, environment as a way to interpret information. But just wanted to throw it out to you guys. Let me know if this was something that you liked, didn't like, whether or not you wanted to see other examples or if you have any questions. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful. Um, if you would like to subscribe, please do subscribe. You can get other content like that uh, once they're available. So I do have, I did have a channel membership. I don't think it's active anymore. And if it is active, it will be deactivated soon. So I wouldn't join just yet. However, if you check the link in the description, you will see um, a link to my newsletter. If you sign up and add your email to it, you will be alerted for when the new community opens up. I am migrating my existing community to a brand new one. And in that new community, I plan on having, um, 
an automation library that holds all of the automations that I create, the ones that I feel are interesting and, and the stuff that I post here on YouTube. And even within the group, you guys would have access to that. Um, there'd be a space for you guys to input your own automation so you can share your ideas and the things that you find helpful to the community as well. Um, a place for you guys to kind of congregate and talk, to DM each other. Um, I, I wanna create this space to be a social space where we can share ideas and elevate what it means to have a smart home right now we we it's easy for us to find a lot of smart home devices like we have we have no shortage of creators suggesting devices but what i don't see too often is how do we use our existing devices and stretch it to infinity how do we get the most use the most bang for our buck out of these things and sure I mean, like that, that exploration can get messy. Sure, it can be a bit weird. We may tr tread into areas that may be uncomfortable, but the first plane was probably very uncomfortable. The first car was probably very uncomfortable as well. A lot of innovation starts off very uncomfortable until it's not, it, until it becomes something that we can't live without. We are in that area, that space where it is uncomfortable, but we get to determine how, when it's not. So come along for the ride if you want. I would appreciate it if you come along. And if you don't, that's okay. Stuff will still be posted here on YouTube. So um, if you're interested, put your email into that newsletter uh, link and, uh, and you'll see. Okay, I think that's it. Bye.